Hi. Today what I'd like to do is set up for a lost foam casting. I purchased this um, Riveter's Forge a few weeks ago at an estate sale. And when I disassembled it, I saw this piece was missing. This is where the, the blower assembly fits on here. It's bolted in two spots. This had a big crack in it. So they they got, went ahead and repaired that, but they, they left this. So there was a, a, a big bar going across here. I wanted to remove it. What I did is I took a piece of styrofoam. I cut a piece of styrofoam pretty close to what the shape of this is going to be. So if you would look straight down over it, the um, blower, which is a little flange with two bolt holes, will fit inside of here. It's kind of shaped in about the approximately the right direction. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and set this into a, a metal container, and I'm going to fill it with sand and show you how you would do a uh, either one-time prototyping piece or if you just need one piece. I mean, there's no reason to make a, a wooden mold or, or a wooden pattern for anything like this. So what I have is a tin can, just a regular tin can, nothing special. Um, obviously, it's got to be metal, can't be plastic, because this is going to see a lot of heat. But what the goal of this is going to be is to slide this down in about, about this far, and then the sand is going to um, form around the, the aluminum and once you pour your metal in here or it's going to form around the styrofoam once you pour the metal in it's going to go ahead and be an exact copy so they call this lost foam because you can only use this pattern one time and what's going to happen is when the aluminum or pot metal whatever I choose to use goes in here it's going to vaporize the styrofoam and it's going to leave the part that I want so we'll see if we have enough sand for it so really all you're trying to do and this is regular play sand there's nothing special about this sand the sand hasn't been sifted. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and tap it a few times. I want to make sure that the sand is really around the piece. We'll see how this happens, how, how this goes with the, uh, the, the screw hole or the bolt hole. It's going to go in. You don't have to ram this like you would a regular pattern. And I'll probably put just a little more, a little more sand in here so I have a, a place for the metal to um, pull. Make a little rim around here, and that's it. That's pretty much ready to go. So the next thing is to get the furnace fired up and to get a uh, some molten metal in here. So once the furnace is fired up, I'll show you what it looks like. Hopefully, as I'm pouring, although that's uh, really two man, one to film and one to pour safely, or I'll just uh, go ahead and video it as much as I can and see how it goes from there. Thank you. So one of the things I forgot to mention is the piece that comes out is going to be as detailed and as smooth as the styrofoam that goes into it. So if you take a regular piece of styrofoam, this was just cut on a, a hacksaw or coping saw, I mean just something, and then, and then sanded down with like a 80 grit sandpaper. So it's very rough. I don't really care what the final shape looks like because I'm just looking at this as a spacer. This isn't going to be a piece of decorative metal. But if, um, if you would smooth this down with sandpaper, it would, uh, you know, maybe uh, 120 grit or something, you would get a, a pretty smooth surface. So all in all, for the styrofoam, it's probably 10 minutes, 15 minutes, uh, you know, five, just a couple seconds to cut. It doesn't take that long. You draw it out and then um, a, a quick cut and then some sanding. So maybe 15 minutes into this one pattern. Um, I'm not going to do three or four of these, which, which I would do if I needed to have you know, I needed to, to prototype this. So this is basically just one piece and uh, say really not much time in it. So if you're just looking for something quick to do, and then I may just use die cast, zinc die cast pot metal on this. It's got a lot lower temperature, uh, melting temperature. I could probably do that with a propane torch, but we'll heat up a pot in the forge. We'll go ahead uh, and get some, uh, some metal molten. Well, today what I want to do is threefold. First off is with old riveter forge. I um, want to show that you can actually use firewood, some charcoal and firewood, and get a, a fire hot enough to, uh, to do what you need to do. Got a good strong wind today too, so we have the external blower. Again, this piece is broken off. I'm going to try to go ahead and cast a new piece out of pot metal, the zinc die cast, which is in the, the pot that I got. Of course, pot got from uh, State Sale, forge I got from State Sale. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Second is a, uh, a leaf spring, which is buried inside down there. It's uh, still coiled up, it's cut off. I'm going to go ahead and flatten that using this flatter tool. Strange thing about this, when I bought it, 
the, the handle was curved, the handle broke off, I went and carved a new handle, and when I carved it, the handle bowed, so I'm assuming that's the way this thing needs to be, is bowed. And what we're going to do when this is done is this lost foam. I'm going to go ahead and put the, the zinc die cast into that. We're probably not going to be able to, uh, to video all of that, but we'll get as much videoed as we can. So that should be the three things. All right, it's been about 15 minutes. Got a good set of embers in here. It's probably not hot enough, but it's getting close. Probably another two or three minutes, maybe five minutes. We'll let that uh, maybe scoop some of the dross off the top of it. The dross is just the oxidized metal. And then uh, we'll be able to pour. So if I do this right, adjust the camera, you can actually see the pour. Really not much to see. All it's going to be is metal going in. You'll see a puff of smoke. The uh, zinc die cast will vaporize the uh, styrofoam and then there'll be some uh, metal left on top, like a little cap. All right, so this is ready to pour. I'm simply just gonna put all the molten metal in there. Dump that. And that's done. Really not much more to see than that back in a couple minutes after that has had a chance to set, cool down, and we'll, uh, we'll pull the part out. So again, what you're going to see is um, stuff on top that where the foam was. The foam has now uh, been vaporized by the pot metal, the zinc die cast, and it'll just, um, just be a duplicate of what I wanted. Thank you. So what I'm really trying to do is in the past I've made wooden patterns. This was a bearing for uh, my John Deere tractor. I needed a bearing housing because the original one cracked. So you have to make this out of wood. You have to put a draft in there which is an angle so that you can remove it. Um, you have to clean it. You have to do so much work just for one piece. I spent I don't know how many hours doing that piece. Same thing with this. Um, it was for a sword that I was making. You have to make a wooden pattern Again, this is just one, one time I'm going to use this, so I spent a lot of time and effort getting this even and getting it all sand down, and I'll, I'll never use it again. And the last one is this two-part mold. I wanted to make a, see if I can make some pipe or something, you know, a bracket or something for a uh, carburetor. So you, you put this part down, you ram the sand in it, turn the whole thing over, put this on it, ram the sand, pull the whole thing out, and again, that took a, a lot of time. You put a core in here. Um, you make a core that, that actually fits inside of here. But that is just so long for one piece. So when you're doing the styrofoam method, if you're just doing one one piece, you want a prototype to do a proof of concept, the styrofoam is the way to go. All right, this has been sitting about five minutes. Hit it with a hammer. It's uh, froze, but it's not. It's solidified. Maybe that's the right word. This has a probably 500 degree melting temperature. If I was pouring this into sand, it would have been a lot hotter. But I have now just a cast. We had not cut the sprue off of here. This now will become part of the blacksmithing forge. Just an adapter that I needed. Just so you think that I'm not crazy, that piece fits right inside there with a little bit of cleanup work, a little bit of fouling work, and the part will be done.